Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this one, we're going to be looking at how we can optimize the database to work best with Bubble's built in database. So, in the last one, we covered database basics where we just set up an inventory type, customer type, inventory group, and we added some fields in there. And we discussed uh, having a group field, which then has a relationship to the iGroup type. So, in our design, I've added another box here. So let's say in this box here we want to display the group name. So let's give this the, the group name. And we'll say the current sales inventory. And then we'll point to the group. And then this then gives us the list of fields that we can point to as part of the group. So we want to display the name. Okay. And this will this will work if we preview it okay that works quite happily however let's look at this again because we're displaying a list of inventory items now we know conceptually that there could be tens of thousands of these things of inventory records so then we need to look at optimizing this so in our repeating group What's happening at the back end is that we're doing this search for inventories. We're not at the minute putting in any constraints, but we're asking it to sort by the SKU or the SKU. And that's going to the server, bubbles easily. It's a fairly easy query to deal with, going back, getting us a list of those items, and then populating uh, the list. And then we're exposing that through these two text boxes. However, this one, we're doing something different. Because what we're doing is we're saying inventories group. Now inventories group, as we discussed in the last video, is actually just, if you look in our app data, it's just an ID that points to a record on the iGroup table. So what Bubble is having to do is to say, okay, inventories groups, I know what the group is, but to get its name, I've got to go back to the server, do another search for that ID in the group and come back with the name and then display it in here. OK, so rather than being, being a straight list of, of data, what's happening now is that we've got a straight list of data. And then for each individual cell, for every record that you've got, and remember, we've only got two in there, so it makes no odds, but you've got to think at scale. OK, it's got to do this thing for every single one. Now, Bubble may well optimise that in the back end, but that's outside of our control completely. So we need to think about what is my golden rule when it comes to database design and structure and optimising the database. And that is to optimise for reads over writes. Now, what do I mean when I say that? Effectively, optimise for getting the data back over getting the data in effectively because if you think about it you are only ever going to write a an inventory item once okay and then you may update it you know a few dozen times over its lifetime but you'll be querying for it searching for it displaying it in a list thousands of times okay so you need to be optimizing for that type of performance so in here this is not the optimal way to do it in terms of this this list because we're forcing bubble to go and do another search for every single line now if you know you're dealing with a data type that's never going to have more than a couple of hundred records then you don't need to worry about it no problem just do this don't complicate it but with this one because you know there could be thousands of different items then we need to probably deal with it and what we really want to do with inventory is to make sure that all we get is one search which is this one and then it and then it gives us all that information raw displayed in a list there's nothing else for bubble to do at that point and that way that's going to be really snappy the performance is going to be really good it's just going to get us the data display it in the list and it's all good so how can we do that well what we need to do is we need to do what is called database denormalization and it's important to understand how bubble works bubble while it is sat on a sql database you don't interact with it like a SQL database. You interact with it very similar to how you interact with a NoSQL database, something like Firebase. 
Now in a SQL database, we have something called joins, which enables you to take two different things that have got a relationship like we've got between inventory and group, and natively at the back end within the database itself, highly optimized, just get you a straight list from the data that's got your SKU, your description, and your group name. Unfortunately, we don't have that kind of mechanism in Bubble. What we need to do then is to see if we want a raw list of data, then we can't have Bubble going away and doing a nested search here and a grab of data there. It just needs to show it as a raw list. So what I do is I will, I will draw out all of my data structures and put them into these types like inventory, which links to a group and all of that type of thing, create relationships. But then I think about how that data is actually going to be retrieved in a list. Okay, it doesn't matter as a one-off record, that's fine. But as a list, you need that data back as quickly as possible. And what I do, I create a list type, okay? And uh, it could be called a satellite type, uh, it could be called a list type. And what I do, I name them the same as its main type, but I just put a pipe in front. And the reason being is when you get a list of the data types, these always appear at the bottom, so they don't get in the way of the main, the main data types. Okay. And then what we do, we create all the same fields in here as we have in the inventory. So we'll create a new field and we'll call, call it SKU. Description. Okay, description. And obviously we have group. There's a reason why I also want to include this as well. And we're going to point that to the I group type just as we did before. I know what I'm going to do though, I'm going to add a group name in there. Okay, and I'm going to then add the other field which we had an on hand field, which was a number, uh, and I will add the others for consistency. So we have a number of cost price, and we have price. Okay. So effectively what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the data from here into here, which if you're a database, SQL database purist, this will be anathema. And trust me, it was to me when I first started to use Bubble. But if you're going to use Bubble's database, you've got to use the tool to absolutely make it sing. OK, there's no point putting a, a petrol into an electric car or trying to run a petrol car <laughs> without petrol. You know, you've got to use the right vehicle the right fuel for the right vehicle so we're using bubbles database let's make it sing so the idea then is we've got this type obviously i'm not putting the data in here at the minute so what i can do back in design in our repeating group is i'm actually going to change the type from inventory to pipe inventory the list type i'm going to just clear that expression out and i'm going to say do a search for and i'm going to say do a search for pipe inventory, no constraints. I'm going to sort that by the SKU as well. Okay, so we get the similar sort of search. And then on here, it's automatically converted it for us because the fields are called the same name, so that's fine. But on this one, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to clear that one out. And I'm going to say, so dynamic data, current cells inventory, group name. So in other words, this has already got the data and I'm just going to reference what's already in the search rather than go back to the database and make it do something else okay and the reason that's important is because as i explained before this is a list so you don't want any kind of nested searching going on whereby for every single line it's going to back it's got to go back to the database which is just going to cause you once you start scaling you get a lot of records in there you're going to start to find that that's going to hit performance and again that's a fairly, the one the way we we're doing that before, just grabbing inventories group's name, that's fairly simple. That's not going to add a, a significant overhead. But you start doing some serious stuff in there and, you know, it really can affect performance. So we don't have any data in, in, this, in the pipe inventory, so we can't see any data. But, and again, you couldn't show it really on two items. You'd need hundreds and hundreds of items to really show the performance benefit. But you've got a design for scale. And that's that's exactly what we're doing there. So I hope that that makes sense. Uh, and generally speaking, what you will do with with your data is that all of the main types of data you will have these type of lists in there. 
and you will duplicate the data. Now, you may say, well, duplicating the data, where does that get updated? How can we sync that data up to make sure that there's not one piece of information in one place isn't reflecting what's in the, the other place? So I tend to have one source of truth, which is this one here, which is the main data type. OK, and then this one is just purely for populating lists. It's not doing any calculations. It's not doing anything that's, that's really important. It's just for displaying the raw data as fast as possible in a list. OK, it's not for searching particularly. It's not for any of that. It's just for, it's just for that purpose. And then what I will tend to do is let's I will put it so that when the user clicks on an item in the repeating group and you want to pop up or you want to go to a different page to display that that item's details, then I will reference the the main inventory type and i may then need to go and do multiple searches multiple nested searches to get all of the data around that that may take a moment but the perceived performance on that is fine because it's one record the issue is when you're doing those kind of nested searches across a list so I just wanted to show you that i'm doing exactly the same thing here which is so some early work i've been doing in the on the business kit app and you can see here, like we've got a list of inventory items only a few and but in here we've got a list of the SKU, the description then we've got the group name which is exactly the same thing as what we've demonstrated in the other one which is that that is being that should be being pulled from somewhere else but it's not because it's being pulled from a from a list type and the same with the location you can see here under stock that we've got like this little icon and the idea with that is that if the items has got stock in more than one location that you then get this this little icon and so we, I only go and query for more information when the user selects it. So I can click that, and then this goes and gets me the, the information that I want, the, the information that I query for, okay? So I'm not asking for that in the list. That's a separate thing altogether. So it's important that those types of queries are stayed away from the list. Now, the other thing as well is like this little icon here that's, that indicates that the, the stock is held in multiple locations. How does it know that this one is and these two aren't? OK, I'm not querying for that at all. I've just got a field on the list type called multi location and it's just a yes, no type. Now, obviously, that's got to be updated. It's got to come from somewhere for that to happen. But the point is, is that that's not been determined at the point of displaying a list that's being done somewhere else. The focus on getting the data in here is purely on speed, getting that data in front of the user as fast as possible. Now we know that Bubble tries to optimize for things, okay? And it does do lazy loading, so it'll never load all of it all at once. It will load whatever it needs to display on the screen and then just load more as, as, you, as you scroll up and down the list. Okay, so Bubble tries to mitigate all of this for you, but it's outside of your as a developer's control. So like I say, remember the golden rule, always optimize for reads over writes. Therefore, we're making it quite inconvenient for ourselves to actually update this information to keep it in sync and the way that we would generally keep it in sync is to use db triggers now you will be need to be on a pay plan to use db triggers but what they are is so that when you make an update in any table you can then fire a workflow at the back end so it's not happening on the client side so it's not you know the user isn't seeing you updating three or four different tables and it's taking that time and they perceive that as being slow you make a change on the front end to one thing that then causes a trigger to get executed on the back end and therefore the all of those updates all of those syncing up of that duplicated data gets done on the back end and the user never knows what's going on at all you're hiding it from the user effectively now when i was talking a minute ago about that bubble may or may not optimize these things for you again uh, what bubble does in the background with database searches it's kind of behind a curtain, okay? You just don't know. It's magic as far as you're concerned. Now, in one instance, what's behind that curtain may be the equivalent of a supercomputer with AI and a team of geniuses working on your query. On the other hand, the curtain, you know, may be hiding the Wizard of Oz, okay? And as Bubble gets better, it's more likely to not be the Wizard of Oz. But if you leave it solely up to Bubble's optimization, you just don't know what you're going to get. And this leads to people saying, I developed this app in Bubble and it was slow. And it was, Bubble isn't slow if you know what you're doing with it. And again, 
you've got to use the tool in the right way to, to, to optimize for it. So the purpose of this is to just let you know a way that you, you load raw information in there. Now, sometimes you can't always do that. Sometimes you do need to know information on the fly. And there are examples in building this app where I'll show you that. So in the next one, we'll continue to have a look at optimizing the database. And we'll look at things like uh, search types. We'll look at data weight. We'll look at calculated fields due to the way that Bubble has some limitations on the way that you can filter data. I hope you'll join me for that one. Thanks for watching. Take it easy and I will see you in the next one.